now on Saluki Sports View. We follow two Saluki football players in the Sunshine State as they vape for an NFL career. Softball coach Kerry Blaylock chats with Sports View as the Salukis are off to a 6-0 conference start. And we hike with a group of adventurers through the woods of Southern Illinois. Saluki Sports View starts now. Live from the campus of Southern Illinois University, Saluki Sports View begins right now. Welcome to Saluki Sports View. I'm Cindy Kessler. And I'm Ahmad Hicks. We have a full roster of stories tonight. From the tennis team continuing their winning streak with nine wins, to Raven Saunders winning a national title in shot put. But first, we take a look at two former Salukis on their way to the professional leagues. I talked to NFL prospects Mike Cole Pruitt and Malcolm Agnew about their training sessions in, before, in Florida this year. After posting some of the best numbers for a tight end in this year's NFL scouting combine, tight end Mike Cole Pruitt traveled back down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to continue preparing for the NFL draft. Alongside Pruitt's standout teammate and running back Malcolm Agnew as he is getting prepared for the same dream. I sat down with both players to discuss how training in Florida together paid off for them at their NFL scouting combine and pro days. I came down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to train with Pete Bomarito and his Bomarito Performance Systems. It's one of the top training facilities in all of America. Life's been good, man. Just come back down to Florida in this beautiful weather, get some more work in. You can't take no days off out here when you're trying to reach big dreams like we're trying to reach out here. Pruitt and Agnew worked out together at Bomberito Performance Systems, where they described having each other as training partners made things much smoother. I mean, it was great, man. We, we both working towards the same goal out there and, and um, pushing each other every step of the way. So. Oh, it's been great. I mean, my co has been a guy that's worked hard. You know, seeing him work hard, I can, you know, work hard as well. We kind of feed off each other at times. And, you know, it's cool to share a laugh and, you know, just to remind me that, you know, it's not just all about the game. You know, we got friends down here. We got loved ones down here. The players' training day started around 6.30 a.m. and did not end until 3.30 p.m. As for how the training went at the Bomberito Complex. Basically, we just put in some good work down there. It was long days, long hours, but, uh... All that training pays off when it comes to getting out here on the field and just getting back to what you know. I feel like I did great. I feel like I did about as good as I could have, or as well as I could have. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my numbers were all pretty good. I peaked out of most of my numbers, so I'm happy with the day. After having a successful pro day, both players weigh in on the next step toward achieving their goal. It's really, I'm just really on standby, waiting for teams to call and you know, fly me out to their facilities, interview me, and show me what their facility is looking like. I stay in shape. Uh, teams can have me out for private meetings. Teams can work me out for private workouts. And, you know, we'll start to gather more information about who's interested and in where I could possibly end up. For an ideal landing destination for the two? Anywhere. I mean, I'd love to be on any team, but I thought it would always be cool to be a Ram because I'm from St. Louis. I like Houston Texans. I love Aaron Foster. He's one of my favorite running backs. I mean, it would be cool to be with Houston, but honestly, any team, I wouldn't even care. Pruitt and Agnew hope to achieve their dreams on national TV next month. The NFL Draft takes place in Chicago on April 30th and runs through Saturday, May 2nd. The softball team is coming off a recent loss, but there are high spirits for this Saluki squad's future. The team is currently undefeated in the MVC Conference, with sweeps over Bradley University and preseason favorite Wichita State. The Salukis are ranked number one in the MVC, with an overall record of 11 wins and 11 losses, and one tie. The team travels to Northern Iowa this weekend to take on the number nine Panthers and head coach Kerry Blaylock will be joining us here on Saluki Sports View in less than 15 minutes. And SIU athlete is receiving some high praise this week from the Missouri Valley Conference. SIU sophomore Mary Ann Patterson has been named the MVC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Patterson received the title for her academic standing and after she hit two game-winning home runs against Wichita State in last weekend's sweep. To receive MVC Scholar Athlete of the Week, the student must have a minimum GPA of 3.2 and must be at least a sophomore in academic standing. Patterson has a GPA of 3.9 with seven RBI so far this season. The SAU baseball team finally broke a six-game losing streak with the commanding 14-3 victory versus Austin P last night. Offense was no problem for the Dogs in this one as they drove in 12 runs in the first four innings. 
The charge was led by second baseman Will Farmer and right fielder J.C. DeMar, who each elected four RBIs. Starter Alex Lisek pitched 6.1 innings for the Dogs, only allowing two runs as he picked up his first win of the season. After the game, head coach Ken Henderson talked about what this win means for the team. Yesterday in practice, that uh, it's coming out today, let's get a win. You know, we talk about playing with it. We said, let's get a win. We need to get a win and, and play and uh, get some momentum going into the conference weekend. And uh, so it, it's huge. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's huge. We needed it. The baseball team returns to action when they take on Bradley University for a three game series beginning tomorrow in Peoria. A freshman thrower is making headlines after receiving her first national title. And the women's tennis team is on a roll. We talked to them about the secret to their success. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more of Saluki Sports in less than 90 seconds. Raven Saunders is one of the top throwers for the SAU track team, and she's only a freshman. Saluki Sports View reporter Simone Woolridge catches up with the athletic sensation. You just got to time it up a little bit more. We all have those odd addictions that keep our heads in the game. Mine happens to be chocolate chip cookies. But top SIU thrower Raven Saunders has a pregame prep of her own. I have to have my uh, peanut butter and honey before I need. Take about four scoops of peanut butter and four spoons full of honey or just drain the honey. People look at me weird, but I mean. It apparently works. Just last Saturday, the superstar freshman did something that was never done before. She took the NCAA title as a freshman, and the first-year college athlete says she did something exciting to congratulate herself. Had some ice cream. Which means she didn't have much time to celebrate. The newcomer took two days off and headed straight back to practice. Transitioning to the college's long practice hours and competition preparations, Saunders had an even bigger obstacle to forepass. It was a real big adjustment between a lot of things going on as a college freshman and then still trying to balance out like school work and throwing and things like that. Thurber's coach John Smith says Saunders had no other choice but to straighten up her academics because this team, who was already one of the top teams in the nation, could be the best yet. This could be this could be my best team of all time. So I'm pretty excited by it. You know, I just gotta keep everybody healthy and everybody eligible and everybody doing what they're supposed to be doing. Just as the team, Saunders has yet to reach her peak. Yes. And with years left to come, she sees nothing stopping her future as a top SIU thrower. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Simone Woolridge. Raven Saunders and the women's track and field team hope to repeat or beat the success they had as the Salukis finished ninth overall in the NCAA Indoor Championship. SAU will be hosting the Bill Cornell Spring Classic Tournament this weekend. The two-day track and field competition brings in schools from all over the Illinois SIU and women's surrounding tennis states. Team? There will be both indoor and outdoor events taking place at the SIU Recreation Center and the Lou Hart Zog Track and Field Complex. A complete list of events, location, and times can be found online at siusalukis.com. The women's tennis team defeated Evansville last night to continue their winning streak. Jasmine Brown reports on the tennis team that has now won nine straight games. The SIU women's tennis team has a lot to cheer about. They are in their hottest stretch of the season, winning eight straight matches. <laughs> Head coach Audra Anderson has a lot to be proud of after a dismal one and six start. We, were, we struggled at the beginning, but then uh, they could work through it, figured out what they needed to do to come together. The women's tennis team is made up of four freshmen, three sophomores, and three seniors. Not a lot of experience for a team on such a winning streak. It definitely takes um, some cooperation, especially in doubles, but also in practice to um, challenge each other, you know, not be a selfish player. The women's tennis team has dominated their home courts, going 8-0 during the streak, heading into conference play. They have eight games left with five that will be at home, but Coach Anderson says they should play every game like it's their last. You've got to be focused every single match. You know, you can't come and decide, you know, the, you know today I'm going to be focused, today, tomorrow I'm not going to be focused. So it, it's got to be a commitment every day. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Jasmine Brown. Who protects this post? We will, we will. Who are we? Yes. All right. 
The women's tennis team returns home this weekend when they host St. Louis University Saturday and Arkansas State on Sunday. What's a pimp? It's not what you think when it comes to fitness at the rec center. We'll show you what we mean. And we travel to the Shawnee National Forest to follow some adventurers who get a huge kick out of Mother Nature. Up, people are heading outside. Sydney Kessler looks at what Southern Illinois has to offer. Southern Illinois is an area known for its natural beauty and incredible hiking and climbing opportunities. As Ahmad just said, the weather is beginning to warm up, so I decided to go out and see what all the hype is about. With finals on the mind, students are spending their time inside instead of enjoying the warmer weather that is finally here. However, Ellie English argues that the best way to handle stressful times is to leave the library and hit the outdoors. Give it a break. Your mind needs a break. It hyper focuses on the wrong things. So you get out, take a walk, and you'll see a bigger picture. Southern Illinois is home to the Shawnee National Forest, which has over 286,400 acres of land, making it perfect for climbing, boating, and hiking as the weather begins to heat up. In the Southern Illinois area, we have uh, a nice mix of trails, some that go to natural bridges like the Pomona Natural Bridge. So you can go forested trails and rocky trails, you name it, we got it here in Southern Illinois. Even the smallest hikers are getting out and seeing what this national forest has to offer. I like that you can see all different rock forms and that you see something new every day. Like you can't go outside and you see all this unique stuff. Base camp at the SAU Rec Center rents out many different types of outdoor equipment, like kayaks, backpacks, sleeping bags, and even coolers. Uh, and so all they have to do is come fill out a form, and then all of our staff will either show them how to strap it onto their vehicle, set it up if it's a tent, um, and they just gotta fill out a form and pay a small like subsidized fee. And that's pretty much it. It's a really, it's a really easy thing to do. You just come, and we'll hook you up with some gear. With the available equipment, good weather, and miles of hiking trails, there are many ways to stay active and even learn. I think some of the biggest life lessons I've ever learned, I learned on the trails. One is when we were doing a hike that was six hours, I was all focused on getting there, getting there. And I learned if you just focus on the end, you'll miss everything in between. To get more information on the activities available near you, visit www.shawneeforest.com. You can also head over to the SIU Rec Center to talk with any of the base camp employees about questions you may have. A list of rental equipment, prices, and outdoor pursuit trips and clinics can be found at www.reccenter.siu.edu. Then click on the Outdoor Pursuits tab on the left. The Saluki football program will hold its annual youth camp on April 24th. The camp is for anyone in grades 2 through 6 who wants to develop their football skills. You can register for the camp at SalukiFootballCamps.com. There's a unique, unique class at the rec center called PIMP. Sports reporter Alan Self checks out one of the tougher fitness clubs at SIU. Uh, there's a lot of good things you can do at the rec center. A lot of fun things. You can run. You can climb the wall. You can participate Jump back and push. in fitness clubs. This fitness club, oh Title Pimp, focuses on your upper body strength and durability. Hopefully we can get a word with the instructions on how all of this works. Well, Pimp is a different kind of hard. Pimp stands for the Push-Up Improvement Program. And I gotta let you know, pimping ain't easy. But what PIMP is, is PIMP was a program and we go through 15 different push-up style exercises, but we do low repetitions of each exercise. So we move through the different fibers of the chest, the shoulders, the triceps, we get some eccentric biceps involved, whole lot of uh, forearms, whole lot of core. Uh, you'll never hit muscle failure in any particular, uh, any particular fiber group, but by the time you're done, you've hit failure everywhere. This program was created by Watkins, who taught the same class while on active duty as a sergeant in the Army. 
The drills were created to improve soldiers' physical fitness before their mandatory physical done by troopers every six months. That's why his classes are so hard. Yeah, he said he, he invented this in army. So. So I enjoy it. I feel stronger every session. So um, it is really good. It's a positive atmosphere and I work out and I feel strong. And he's awesome. He gives me so much positive energy. Something that is worth doing, especially for those looking forward to this summer's weather, is losing weight and staying in shape. Normal participants believe that all the hard work in this program pays off for them in the long run. I'm a big fitness fanatic and I've been attending the classes here since pretty much I was in my sophomore year. And um, I was actually 140 something pounds when I first started and now I'm down to about 120 pounds because of these fitness classes. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Alan Self. There are more than 60 fitness classes offered at the Recreation Center every week. To, par to participate in PIMP, show up at the Rec Center's Big Gym Tuesdays at 7.15 p.m. While many Saluki teams are getting busy this weekend with a packed schedule, we'll have the full list of events. Plus, we talked to softball co head coach Kerry Blaylock about the Saluki's current season. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. We are live at Charlotte West Stadium in Carbondale, Illinois. I'm your host, Gabe Pischke Damien. Joining with me, head coach of the Saluki softball team, Carrie Blaylock. Carrie, thank you for joining us. No problem at all. All right. So tell us about this um, season with the Sal Saluki softball team. You guys are undefeated right now in the conference. What do you think about that? Oh well, Gabe, we're really excited, obviously, to be six and zero. But you know, we realize there's 21 games to go. It's very, very early. And really our mindset right now is just taking one game at a time. You guys have swept Bradley University and preseason ranks, or favorite that is, Wichita State. Tell me, how, how does that feel sweeping both of those teams so far in the conference? Well, it's been great. I'm just more happy for the kids that they've really, um, effort. their effort and attitude has been amazing. Um, our energy has been amazing. Uh, we've had more come from behind victories in this two-week stretch than I have in my 25-year career. So <laughs> it's been kind of, that's been about to give me a heart attack, but it's fun. Um, so it's been, um, it's been a good run so far, and we just have to try to keep it rolling. What's the mindset that you guys try to keep when you're training or getting prepared for the next softball game that you have? I'm going to have to give all the credit to the kids because, you know, we started the season kind of slow, kind of rough. I think at one point we were 3-8. and eight. I don't think I've ever been three and eight in my career. So again, that was kind of a first. But these kids never practice like they were three and eight. They don't play like they were three and eight. Uh, they'd come to work every day and were ready to go. And you know, they just stuck with it. They knew they had a plan. I think a lot has to go with Katie Bertelson and the way she sets her uh, presence on the mound. And then having people like Kelsey Gonzalez and Kaylin Harker and Shay Hari and all those people that can come along. Is there any kind of achievements or accomplishments you guys want to make this year? I know one of your players have mentioned that they're like the win the conference titles. Any other kind of um, accomplishments you guys want to do before the end of the season? I think that's the main thing. I mean, I think if you're if you don't want to win a conference championship, then you shouldn't be out here. So you know, again, we've got to take a one game at a time approach. But we do we do would like to win the whole thing. I've been told by a few players and some Saluki fans that you guys are known for your academics in school. Is that true? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Since I've taken over as head coach, and even before then, several top ten finishes in the country as far as GPA, cumulative GPA. We've got as high as second. I'm teasing them this year because we, were, we did so well in the fall that I've been um, – teasing a few of them on their grade reports that they better not blow my chance at being number one. So we, we joke about that all the time. But yeah, very good students, um, spend a lot of time at it. That's very impressive for, especially for an SAU program here, to be ranked in the nation for academics. Is that something you guys try to keep going every season here at SIU? Yeah, I think it becomes a real competitive thing, Gabe. Like, nobody wants to be the odd man out. Nobody wants to ruin the GPA. So. 
You know, we obviously have a no class missed policy. So if you miss class, you're you don't go. You're not going to play. So they know that. Um, they also take pride in in um, trying to achieve a very very good GPA, and they've been able to do that. What kind of advice would you give to someone that wants to become a future athlete, especially in college softball? You know, it's going to take a lot of work, and you need to be able to live it and breathe it 24 hours a day. And, you know, um, like I tell these kids, I understand sometimes it gets taxing or tiring, but you can only do it for four years, and after that it's all over with. It was the best four years of my life when I played, and I try to make it the best four years of their life when they're here. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. We're live here at Charlotte West Stadium in Carbondale. When we come back, we'll talk about the upcoming weekend schedule for Saluki Athletics. Stay tuned. Here are some of the events happening in Saluki country this weekend. The SIU baseball team is in Peoria for a three-game series against Bradley. First pitch is on Friday at 6 p.m. at Dozer Park. The softball team will be in Cedar Falls to take on the Panthers, starting with a doubleheader on Friday at noon. The women's golf team will be in action at home this Sunday for the Saluki Invitational. And both men's and women's tennis teams will be in action this weekend. The men travel to Murfreesboro, Tennessee to take on the Raiders for the three-game MTSCU tournament. And the women will be hosting St. Louis University Saturday before traveling to Arkansas State this Sunday to take on the Red Wolves. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good night.